Hello and welcome to Comic Reviews and Acts. Uh, this is reviewing Iron Man 3, the new Marvel film that's just come out. Be warned, there is going to be a fair few spoilers. So if you do not want to take part on, and have the spoilers given to you, if you want to save and see it for yourself, do not watch this review. Uh, so yeah. Go watch the film, then come back. <laughs> so we're going to start off by talking about the other two films. Um, how the other two films started, how they went through. Um, and the first film definitely had much more success than Iron Man 2. Definitely. Definitely on that one. Both in story, development of character. And it had Jeff Bridges. An overall villain, really. Yeah, it I'd say. You know, it's the, there's a the relationship between Obadiah and Tony throughout the first one. And then he's only met Van Cobb like, Whites. Yeah, it's like, it's like, like, oh, okay. like I know in the it's comics. Like a, it's like a pen pal. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> You're my villain today, are we? I was like, in the comics, um, it, ex it explains a bit more about Van Gogh and his father and the relationship between Howard and, and how he was involved within the art reactor development. And it explains that more in the comics and how. That kind of it leads on, like even in the game, the Iron Man Two game has more story than the film. <laughs> in the Iron Man Two game, Vanka, uh, the re people re related to Victor, um, right. Steve, download Jarvis, right? Okay, and uh, use it to create Ultimo. Huh. So even the game had more storyline than the film. We need Hank Pym for that, though. Yeah, who was in the Avengers no, no, the entire Ultron. time. Not Ultron, Ultima. Ultima Dragon? No, Ultima is a giant version of Jarvis. Ah, uh, he's the Mandarin dude, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Over the first two, the first one definitely had more success than the second one. Uh, because Tony Stark built it in a cave! <laughs> with a box of scraps! <laughs> um, and it shows you... And the second one gave us... I took your stuff. How do you like that? Yeah, and and the other he could, he, said the word bird. Rhodey could fly the fly the suit perfectly in the second one. Now, I'm going to say something quite controversially. Um, personally, I enjoyed the second one more than the first one, and I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with that. Um, and I can understand why, especially the five second long boss battle at the end of the film. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you all 30 seconds to get away before they go off. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> you'll love. <laughs> you'll love. <laughs> um, and I, I honestly can't back my opinion up with any valid reasons. But on the whole, I enjoyed the second film a lot more. Um, but the main thing that I like to take away from the Iron Man series, rather other than um, other ones, is how it goes for the less well-known villains. Um because before I watched the second film, I'd never heard of Whiplash before. Yeah, um, neither did I. It was that um, the first one as well, Ironmonger. It's they're not very big villains. Whereas like with the Spider Man, you got all oh, your Doc Ox and Sandman yeah. and things like that. I think it comes down to the Rogues Gallery. Yeah. Well, it's a case of like even in the third one, like we're gonna the villain's gonna be the Mandarin. The, the Tony's we major know that one. <laughs> Tony's major villain. Yeah, the Mandarin. Wrong! <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and the Mandarin. Go on, to, on the top of the Mandarin, what's your views? I really liked it. <laughs> when I first saw, um, and again, spoiler, spoiler, blah, blah, blah. When I first saw that the Mandarin wasn't actually the main villain, he was just an actor at first, I was like, oh, oh, oh <laughs> okay, that's, that's a bit, that, that's different, but... Hello, my name's Trevor. <laughs> that, that's the thing, it was a really big move on um, their side. On um, the gamble. director's side, it was a big gamble. Um, but if they'd done it any other way, other than the comical way that they did, I don't think it would have paid off. No, because the Mandarin, there's no way to honestly justify him in the films. No, that, that's the thing, because in the films it's just out of nowhere, he's got absolutely no nothing. history. The thing is, he's got no ties to Iron Man either in the film. He's just a terrorist from the Middle East. And, and beforehand, we know you're going to argue Ten Rings Terrorism Circle. That was all a ploy. 
Yeah, because we know the Ten Rings have been in it ever since the first film, right from the very beginning. But at the end of the day, the only other tie that he's got from that is when um, Tony Stark fucked up the ship at, um, at the cave. But other than that, the Mandarin's got no... You've got nothing against Iron Man. And the only thing that kicks off um, Tony Stark versus Mandarin is when he um, messes up his mate. Um, I mean, other than that, he's got no real reason for going after Tony Stark. No. So, which is why I'm kind of glad they kind of made Killian the Mandarin. Because it's a case of... It's a case of Killian had an actual reason, sort of. He was... He was... He, he had a reason to go after Tony, and that's because he was the only one who could help him perfect the extremists. Yeah. Because Killian was... The whole point of... For those of you who haven't seen it, spoiler alert, the Mandarin was a terrorist made by Killian... Um, so that kill because extremist was faulty hardware, so he made the Mandarin to seem like a terrorist for when it went wrong, uh, so he could blame the Mandarin for the explosions, which were random. There was no actual plot behind that. Um, but I was actually quite shocked though that Tony didn't get infected with extremist. Yeah, I've not personally read the extremist storyline, but I know that um, that I know that he used that. Um, to help him with his suits. Yeah. Um, and I mean, especially with the Iron Man 3 trailer as well, a lot of people speculated when they saw him on the operating table that that was going to be him being implemented with Extremis. Um, so I was quite shocked at the end that he had nothing to do with it. Even, <laughs> yeah. like, even when he was taking um, the shrapnel out at the end when he was getting rid of his arc reactor, I would have thought that you know, he would have you know, exactly. tried try and tie in the Extremis there to help yeah. him recover. I think that would have been actually a, a good move because I think um, the tie together at the end, where the tie and everything, all, all the different plots together, I, I think it felt a bit rushed. And if they'd added just an extra yeah. five ten minutes into the film to have just him implement extremists, yeah, saying you know implementing himself with extremists to help him recover recover from the arc reactor rather than just. Oh, well, I had an operation and yeah, cause took it out. Yeah, because isn't there going to be like a massive gaping five inch hole in his chest now? Exactly. He, he, the where the, are they going to take the flesh from to fill that five inch <laughs> hole? Skin graft off, it off his arms. <laughs> so, just walking around. Well, it, it brings the question as <laughs> well. One cheek bigger than the other. <laughs> <laughs> it brings the question like, if he can just operate on himself to remove the shrapnel, why didn't he do that the second he got back to America? Yeah. Exactly. Surely tying in with the whole extremist storyline, that would have been a good reason to do for, it. Plus, you know, with, a good exactly with Opie it. like taking his uh, Obadiah taking his first react, well, his second one that he made. You'd think after that film, like, yeah, this could happen again. <laughs> Maybe want to get rid of this thing. Yeah, it's like well, apart, <laughs> mind you, it did pay him good. It did pay its dues in the Avengers. No. And this normally happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, well, I suppose they could blame that down to the fact that Mayor Hansen died after like first five second appearance. Yeah, uh, again, like I said, I've not, I don't know a lot about the extremist storyline from the comic book side of things, but I, I've got a basic understanding that she um, quite a big part. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you know, the creator of the extremists. If you're going to base a film off the extremists. Um, Surely the creator should have a big, bigger a part. A bigger part. <laughs> than, hi, I made extremists. Oh, now I'm dead. I don't know. Maybe that's what they want you to think. <laughs> <laughs> Coulson. <laughs> uh, but, I don't know, it's kind of like the same with uh, Bruce Wayne's parents. Do you think they'd have a bigger part of his life? Nope. You're dead. Age <laughs> <laughs> eight. eight. Okay. You get, a, you get a relish the fact that they were kids again, though. I haven't been a kid since I was eight. <laughs> Cock blocking himself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, but even though Maya died, I mean, what's your views on the clean slate, though? I mean, loads of people are there going, oh, it's the end of a trilogy. I don't think it's going to be a trilogy. I think there's, because he's in the next Avengers. Obviously, yeah. Um, and I, I swear that I heard that he's already signed for Nine and Four, because what I do know, this is a fact, um, at the studios, Marvel Studios, Robert Downey Jr. has threatened to quit uh, due to the fact he is getting paid too much, or his pay, his wage is too high above everyone else's, and he's he's threatened to quit um, if 
his co-actors don't get a pay rise. He will, and he said he will willingly take a pay decrease, decrease for them to get a pay rise. No, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I reckon he's in line for a fourth. Everyone one. wins there. Yeah. I, I don't think that they'll do another Iron Man movie. Um, cause like I said at the end, it said um, Tony Stark will return, but I don't believe that's with. Another Iron Man movie. I've you think all... Tony Stark will return, not Iron Man. <laughs> no, um, I think he'll return, but not in an Iron Man movie. And he'll come back as um, Iron Man, as Iron Man in the Avengers. And I think that's what they were getting at. And Guardians. And, and Guardians. Um, I mean, bringing it back to the clean slate, I think it was a um, a good idea because the whole, well, my take on the whole of this film is that it's trying to show. It's more it's, the Tony Stark rather than the Iron Man. Yeah, it's it's the fact that because the thing is, everyone the, the argument like you know the infamous argument for who would win, Bruce Wayne or Tony Stark, mm-hmm. and everyone's an argument is well, Tony Stark needs the suits, and this film is saying he doesn't need the suit. He's capable of looking after himself. Bruce Wayne is still a kick his ass though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into that. No, but yeah, and like I was saying, um, this film's mainly about. Um, as a character rather than just his suits um, and I think one thing um, that they could have done better with this film and that's what I think this film is at the, um, in my opinion is it's good ideas poorly implemented um, it's when he's um, brings the Iron Legion in yeah that kind I of think, any longer yeah it, it's he's got he's on like his is it 47 mark 47 42 42 no. um, and that is a jump of 30 odd suits between films and I think they could have again just for the sake of adding an extra 15 minute montage they could have really helped do, done Demon in the Bottle with that that's what I always thought it was going to go to and they, the could, they could have really done Demon in the Bottle to, that, that, that would explain why his insomnia and everything I mean at the end of the Avengers okay I know he almost died but he was fine he got swarmer Exactly, he came back from space, even though gravity didn't work in space. But... Don't mention New York. Don't, don't bring up New York. <laughs> hey, hey. Do you know how I know? <laughs> because we're connected. <laughs> well, yeah, like I said, it, my opinion of this whole film, and the reason out of the three that it's not my favourite, it was a much bigger budget, you know, you can tell yeah. from the effects, the, you know, it had potential to be the biggest of the three, but it was, it was great ideas poorly implemented. I still reckon it was probably one of the top ones though. Yeah, it, out, out of all the Marvel films, it's definitely up there. But the one thing that stops it being the, the top, the, the top one is they could have the, done they, it better. They just throw in um, ideas from the comics. They don't really build on them. Yeah, um, and as someone who isn't big on comic book reading. Um, most like of, to mo- know more. Well, that no, it's not that. It's, a lot of my knowledge of the Marvel universe does come from the games and from the films, and for, and I know there are a lot of fans like that out there, um, and I think that they just throw in cameos and you know, things like that, and we've got no idea what they are. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's like the Iron Legion and um, the Titans at the end. It's, it just seems very rushed. If they're just taking like an extra 15, 20 minutes at the end of the film, just to spread it out a bit more. Yeah. Like, um, I don't think anyone would have complained. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like it, all the different suits he's got. If each suit had like a little one, two minute fight, you know, just to show which one it is. Cause yeah. You only see. It's like the stealth suit. Actually, you actually had a bit where you saw it go, zoom, camouflage. Zoom, come back yeah. in. And cause there's all these suits and they only show about five different ones and don't even show what they do it's like when yeah um, it's like stuff like you saw it like he said uh heartbreaker go help out such and such yeah and the, they don't explain like the heartbreaker is the is kind of his main suit before he goes off into space um then you have it goes on about ego hold up that building that's clearly the hulk buster yeah i would love to see more of that I don't know um, if it was big enough to be a Buster. It was, it was contender, but it's like it's when Tony's actually fighting Killian. Tony himself goes to about three or four suits, doesn't he? Swapping in and out of them. Yeah, one of them was the Centurion, which is supposed to be damn tough. 
Yeah, but that, that's the thing. There's all these different yeah, but variations it's the of the real suits. Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> There's all these different variations of suits, and join the fight just the ones that Tony's jumping in and out of, there doesn't seem to be any noticeable difference other than how we look. Yeah. And I think if um, if they'd focused on, you know, less on the fighting, cause I must admit, um, that's one thing that this film did better than the second one, is the fight scene yeah. between Tony Definitely. and the main bad guy was... Pepper kicks ass! <laughs> It's, it's a lot more... She wears the pants now. Yeah, definitely. But it's a lot more drawn out, and that's not a bad thing. Cause, you know, if a two-hour movie's building up to a fight... Right, you, you want it You want, you, it, you want it to be quite substantial. But if they'd just taken five, ten minutes out of the fight scene and just put a bit more attention to the suits, I think it would have paid off a lot more as a whole for the yeah. movie. I mean, what I did like, though, about the film was one thing's a... I liked Tony's relation with the little kid. Yeah. I've seen a lot of um, comments and reviews online that are saying that a lot of the humour's forced and it's all one-liners and things like that. I, bo- I didn't feel it was, though. Some some I did feel um, were a bit... Not necessarily forced, but a bit stale. Yeah, yeah. there was a good but, stale. But I do... But, the one thing that I think was genuinely funny was the relationship between Tony and the kid. And again, it's, a lot of people are going to disagree with that. Um, but I, I don't understand why Tony would build such a relationship with a kid. But I think um, the way he did it was really good. Was really good. Um, so some of the one-liners with the kid. Um, yeah, I know, right? Because we're connected. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway. I liked his roads relationship. I like to see how that progressed from being War Machine yeah. to then having to be Iron Patriot and how they had a bit of a laugh with that one. Yeah. And the whole passwords. Yeah. yeah. War Machine rocks. <laughs> yeah. <Rex. laughs> yeah, there is there's, there is loads you can go into for that. But anyway, but what's your overall thoughts? Um, um good film. Um I'd watch you, it again. I'd watch it again. I'll probably end up getting it just so to keep the whole uh, collection going. Yeah. See I I I can watch the Avengers more than this one though. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those films that it, it is it's a genuinely enjoyable film. I could it's I could watch it over and over again. It, I could just you know stick it on while I'm doing some work or something and watch it. But as a standalone film, it is it's very good. I would rate it very highly. But the main concern with me is what they could have done. Yeah, it's Green Lantern syndrome. Yeah. It, it, it was like I've been saying all the way through. Excellent ideas, poorly implemented. Do you know what? What? Dragon Ball. Evolution. Yeah. Good, brilliant idea. Horribly executed. Yeah. Very horribly. I mean, there were better fan-made trailers on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I said, I think I think as a standalone film, it is is very good. You know. Yeah. Eight eight out of ten sort of thing. I agree. Eight out of ten. But. Yeah, what, what wow. it, the the thing that's stopping it being the best Marvel film is it's, it seems a bit rushed. Um, no Coulson. The... First Iron Man film with no Coulson. <laughs> Agents of Shield, man. We know you're alive, Coulson. But um, yeah, it's a fantastic film, but it could have been so much more. Yeah. Anyway, so that's our points. We're going to give this film an eight out of ten. Definitely recommend watching it if you've not already seen it. Uh, post your comments. Well, we hope you have seen it, otherwise we just give you tons of spoilers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, post your comments if you're watching. Um, if you disagree with anything. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Any other films uh, from the Marvel Universe or even DC you want us to give a look at and tell our thoughts, let us know in the comments below. Yeah, yeah. Um, apart from you, Daft. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, it's still on, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you about this film, and we shall see you all next time.